So Mandalorian handles, I'm in your name, back to your name. You guys are gonna go crazy, you're gonna keep clapping so loud. So please welcome to the stage, Brenda Wayne and Diana Lee in the center. Welcome! Welcome to the catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please get comfy, cozy. Hey everybody.
see a, a lot of women, let alone women over 25. Yeah. She has carved out a career because of talent, because she found a multifaceted way to approach the business. I got in under the guise of um, he's physical, he can do stunts. I've never, I've never done stunts. I've like physically informed a character, but stunts is a craft and a, an ability that's beyond me. Diana can do both. She can act and she can do stunts. And there's no shade on me. I, I do what I do and I'm good at it. But to watch somebody, uh, our experiences in the business, we have our own obstacles. But to me, she's had a lot more. She's mixed race. She's a woman in a, in a town that does not support women in all forms. Very specific. So to watch her break these barriers and then fulfill these characters in a way that is so strong and powerful and it has nothing to do with anything but her talent and ability. You know, you can write all you want, but unless you can perform it and, and resonate it, it doesn't matter. That's no shade on me. I love what I do. I have the best time ever. I get to walk on the sets that are things I dreamed of as a kid, and I get paid to go shoot and kick people's tails. So it's a lot of fun. So how old were you when you got into the martial arts? Because I get the feeling that you were pretty well, much from the get-go. Yeah, it was I, cool. Well, no, I mean, not, in this company, I would never say I had a <laughs> I've, I've dabbled in things, but I'm a boxer. I'm pro boxer. Oh, wow. I've, I've uh, eaten a lot of right hooks and jabs, um, which probably... Wait a minute, look at me. Wait a minute, can I That nose is too good to be a boxer. You know, he actually... I just looked... It was Manny Pacquiao's sparring. Yeah. Partner? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, I, I was in this very beautiful position when I, I had this surprise call uh, to come and be a part of something that I've always loved since childhood. And, um, but it was amazing because um, some of the movers and shakers that I would meet, which was Mr. Filoni, would tell me so much about this man that I had a chance to work with him. So um, I, I met up with Pedro to do uh, a table read, but the actual scene that you see with me in it is with him. And he had to learn the lines, and he was coming back from this challenging time in the hospital. And he comes back with the spirit and love, and it made it so easy. I was so nervous, and to be cast, honestly, at my age, later in life, to have this opportunity. But I loved it because he was there for me, and we were there for what, 12 hours? Yeah, and it was be it was a beautiful because there is a ha a lot of. Uh, this physical acting in the process as well as him having to deliver the lines for me um, when we're doing our scene. And I, I can't begin to explain what it was to have this guy be my partner and to do this wonderful scene. And I'm just so still grateful, you know. And yes, best our besties. I love that. <laughs> I have no idea what it's like to work with a friend. <laughs> we hate each other. Absolutely. That's why we sit so far apart. That's right, yeah, yeah. You're just, oh. you're in the stopping house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, but I mean, on that, like, the actual craft and everything of uh, a movie, I'll talk about it, like Star Wars, like, how is that um, to work? Because obviously you're in armor, you know that you've got to be very physical, but how is that to act against, like, do they have a microphone in your helmet so the lines are flipped? Like, or are you like it? No. I do my best. I do my best to project. Um, I'm theater trained, so that, that was a little help. When I started in the business, I started. I was almost 30 when I started to act. Um, and I remember it, uh, my mom said they're going to expect a lot of you. And I was like, why? And they're like, they're why? Of John Wayne. And I'm like, nobody cares. It was 50 years after, you know, whatever. I was wrong, she was right. <laughs> but, uh, so she sent me to theater school. I learned how to dance. That was, I mean, I was like, you know, dance belt and doing my stuff. Like, this is terrible. But it, it's all, it, when you find that, that physical moment in a character, and it informs everything. And I've always been physically driven uh, as an athlete to inform my characters that way. And it's funny, I grew up not one, I couldn't be John Wayne, I'm not 6'5", this big swashbuckling guy. So I'd always gone away from it, and this show has brought me to my roots, the things that are natural to me. Yeah. The I less like I there's a lot of dudes watching right now going, I couldn't be this big swashbuckling guy, and going like, are you sure, mate? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, you know, it takes a special sort of man who can just very casually pull off a cowboy hat. Yeah. If I did that now, they would be like, oh, oh Matthew. I would <laughs> like to point out that Dave Pomoni always wearing his black cowboy hat. So I want you to look at the old pictures of Dave. And then look at the in the last two years, because I bought him his new hat, because his old one looked like it was a little boy's that he stole. <laughs> it was too small for his hand. I had it shaped for him professionally. Unbelievable. And at first he's like, ah, uh, it's too big, it's too big. I'm like, put my hat on. If anybody in here, you're from Pittsburgh, I know how to wear a hat. I know how to wear a cowboy hat. I know how to, you know, get it done. Listen to me. And now he wears it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pin into the, the, the pro about how to approach wearing hats. For I, sure. I feel like your end of filming, like past, present, seems to be everyone gets a custom made cowboy hat now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to get one. Yeah, yeah. I think you would rock a cowboy hat. Absolutely. Yeah. I have to. I gotta, I gotta do this. But it's kind of interesting again with like all the Western background view and everything. Like the Mandalorian is essentially a Western. I mean, that, that one is yeah. having done Cowboys and Aliens with John. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I thought I'd never work with him again because that didn't do so well. But that said, um, 10 years later, I get this phone call hey, come check out. We want you to try on a costume. That was all it was. And I remember. 
they, I go there to the legacy these guys make everything. Terminator, hopefully one day they'll come out here and you guys can meet the, con the guys who built the costumes that you oh, that would be see out here. We've had a few, like he's done the old, like, Chad the Hook puppeteer. Oh, yeah. It's fascinating. But, and, and, so these guys, I walk in and I'm like, oh, there's Thor, there's T2. This is a pretty cool place. I go in and they open this box and I'm like, Boba Fett. <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I signed the NDA, it's cool. I got this. They're like, it's not. I'm like, okay. And then I tried this thing on and uh, it just felt like, like, I never would have guessed it. And, and I had started studying uh, old form of Japanese theater of Kabuki oh, wow. in order to inform wow. this yeah. guy. And so it's all mask related. And um, and then John and Dave saw the pictures and were like, he looks good, let's bring him in for a film test. And I said, no. <laughs> I, they, when they wanted me to go do this, it was when my kid was going to college. And so my thing was, hey, look, it's not like marriage. It won't happen twice. I'm taking my kid to college. Amazing. And so they were like, you're saying no? And I was like, yeah. It's the only thing, only, my family's the only thing that would have ever made me say no. They're like, we'll fly you home early. I'm like, nope. So they moved it earlier. For, they had to change their schedules. And you know, I'm, I'm bartending to make a living, put my kids through school. And so, uh, yeah, on one level, it's like, you don't have a right to say no. But I, you know, family first turned out really good for me, went there, did the screen test, everybody had a great time, I guess, and I, the rest is history. Like, I literally was like, John, what are we doing here? Because we're doing a Western. You're gonna play George Lucas's dream of the true nomadic Eastwood John Wayne cowboy. And I was like, I'm in, let's go. Yeah, it's interesting too, the balance, I think too, that the show has of this both Western, and martial arts genre. Yeah. That is what I think is incredible, is that they've been able to do this balancing act between those two worlds, those two genres, and merge them, you know? Again, this is what's fascinating about like, Star Wars as a, a franchise growing and going into these TV shows. Like, there clearly is so much they want to do with it, and now they can do. Yeah. So you, you can get these things, if, if someone said to me, like, 20 years ago, so like that, and they're like, yeah, that'd be amazing, but obviously not going to happen. But now it's like, in this huge, I mean, now we're on TV. Yeah. 20 years ago, somebody said, hey, we're going to put a Star Wars TV series on. You'd have been like, yeah, I've seen the Ewoks Christmas special. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's why, you know, that's where my gun came from. The rifle. Oh, really? That was from that show. Both of them had it in the show. Really? And so they... They threw that large rifle on my back. That was terrible. <laughs> when I got it, it was longer than me. I'm like, you guys gotta cut this out. It would catch in my room, and I'd be running and be like, <laughs> <laughs> so that beautiful, graceful quality you get of Mando. Man, that, there's a lot of people that make it look beautiful. Everybody behind the scenes doesn't get enough credit because, as we know, on set. It's always we, it's never me. And so, you know, without without the magistrate, without Michael Bean, without these things, without our VFX, without the props that make the robots, it's we're nothing. Real, yeah, it's a real family experience. I, I don't know, how, you know, everybody assumes I'm giving lip service, but I, I, I have to say, the, the particular group that we've been in, it's just like family, it really is. And so there's such chemistry between all of us and it just, it makes our work so much easier. And so much more fun. Yeah. Because those days when you don't feel so good, somebody else is, and you feel like, oh, I gotta honor them, I can't come in and, you know, sit on the day and be like, mm -hmm. yeah. just come in and, and have a responsibility to other people, communally, makes it, easier to get beyond your momentary problem yeah. and that's that to just so you know as a crowd when i go work on those tough days if i especially if i'm 
pretty much solo, like in season one. You're the reason that I work harder because I'm you. I'm yeah. a fan. I started with New Hope, the first movie my mom ever took me to that I recall. And so it means the world to me that I honor this storytelling and this current mythology that we love and, and share. And I'm, I'm you before I'm Mando. And I know that every time I get to put on the helmet, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. So, you know, without you, I got nothing. I don't care what, I don't care what kind of talent I have, or Pedro or the team for anybody. It does not matter because if you don't like it, who's watching it? Howard the Duck. Anyone know that? Exactly. We all love our fans. We really do. We know you guys are part of the equation for this. It's this yin and yang relationship. And so we're constantly thinking of all of you, honestly. You know, you guys keep the spirit of, of these stories alive. And that's what makes it so beautiful. So thank you to all of you, seriously. I mean, you yeah, are. Yeah, she put themselves in Seriously, all of you. you know. um, we are going to give you a chance to ask a question. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll turn down the front. Yeah, we're going to watch it. Watch the speakers, just in case. particular show and um, that we all now know um, and I would get this call from my manager saying that the producers from Mando, Mandalorian want to meet me. I go, I don't know anyone. I couldn't even get a, a talent agent at that time. Nobody would see me. Nobody would take me in as a talent. And so I thought this is a joke. And sure enough, my friend who was also a manager just said, no, this is real, get prepared. And I went in, I auditioned, and what I found out later on is John Favreau and Dave Filoni, apparently John had said, I really want to find an authentic person, a woman that has martial arts ability, and then hopefully could act. And so they found me through Google, of all places, they found me through Google. Wow. What did they Google? They, according to Dave, he Googled woman martial artist and my, somehow my photo came up and it was me and my key from my movie, The Sensei, and then he clicked on it and then it came up with all this information about who my godfather was, who my father was, and he goes, you know what, let's, let, let me take this back to John, I guess they had a talk, a powwow, and said, that, yeah, let's have her come in and read for the role, and I, when I got the sides, I honestly, I thought it was, it, it, it reads like a period piece, like a military period piece. You would never know in a million years. It involved a genre in a galaxy far, far away. So I knew nothing about this character other than I, I thought maybe it was going to be one day work and that's it. I had no idea that it would evolve and I would, 
I would become this night sister. I just knew I was with him doing this role. I didn't even know my name was Morgan Elspeth. Oh, really? They never told me the name of my character. He knew my name. I never so knew. Yes, and so was. Well, I, I would get full scripts. Uh, and they don't give full scripts to everybody. So I would have, and then I would be able to ask the questions. Hey, is this, and the funny thing is, like, I never want to let Filoni know that I've watched his cartoons. He gets really mad when I call him cartoons. So, I refuse to acknowledge it. Um, we would have a budding rivalry. So, my dad, but I knew, I was like, oh, that's, that's where this is going. When do you get that information? Never. Never, I just, 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 it was like different sides that were fed really? to me. On set? Yeah, and I just did, and all I did because of my acting training, I just would make up my own history, my own background, and hope and pray that it would just fill in the gaps of what they needed. And of course, you know, Dave was there to, to direct us yeah, and give us, you know, the notes that we needed in the moment to do our scene. That's crazy. It is crazy. But so the night that it aired, and we were in pandemic mode at, at that time, but I know that episode, I remember that he was speaking, you know, a big deal about, you know, uh, Baby Yoda being called Grogu, but I'm like, wait a minute, Rosario just said, you know, more than Elspeth, and she's conquered all these worlds, and this, and I'm like, what? You know? so, yeah, it, it was a real delight, a real surprise, but even then, I did not know that it, it involved, I had no idea that I would ever be cast later on, to work with Rosario and Natasha and Ray and Ivana and Lars. I had no clue. I, I just love the idea of going, wait, I'm in Star Wars? Yes, I, <laughs> seriously, I would sometimes cry. Oh, I'm like, I can't Star Wars? believe this. Yeah. I, you know, wow. Yeah. So, that's amazing. That, that blow my mind. Yeah. How do you work? I think what I love as well about this, and I think it's a really good takeaway, is the fact that you, uh, you put yourself out there you made your own stuff, you did the work, and obviously it didn't pay off immediately, but it meant that when it got to the point that someone Googled martial artist woman, that's what they Google. everything that you've done, yeah. finally had this massive portfolio. So just say that people yeah. should also, don't, don't lose heart if you put your own in. Also, we got some more questions out of the front. Yeah. Also, what a title for a biography, Martial Artist Woman. <laughs> what a title you've been given for your autobiography later on. Martial Artist Woman. Yeah, yes. right. It's in the Google search box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Google. Hello, and welcome to Belgium. And I just wanted to thank you for being in this much loved franchise. Um, oh, thank and, you. You know, I read all the comics and extended universe, and finally we got to see some of it.
Let's you, find them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll we get could, you guys in the ring. We, we could just do the commentary of the real we'll win. Yeah. I like those odds. Yeah. Um, I'm really sorry the wrestling is it's really hard to hear now, but uh, you guys are here all day, so aren't you? If you've got questions, if you've got things you want to sign in, so please go see them. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to make you lose your voices. So, guys, you have to be louder than the wrestling. So please, hey, yeah, go, you're always Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I absolutely love my first panel. Guys, we could talk all that. Let me just say one thing that I think goes towards what they're here saying. Is there's nothing, in, and if you get to, you know, my age and over a half century old, there's nothing that's not a marathon. There's no sprints, there's no overnight successes, nothing lasts that isn't built on a foundation. And this show and the legacy that it came from back in the 70s to now is based on that idea. So keep going. It doesn't matter. I'm a bartender through the first season. I still bartended on the weekends because I didn't think it was going to last. So have faith, persevere, you'll overcome it. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we usually get a little selfie with everyone. You guys have been here before, you know what to do. Thank all the yeah. happy faces behind us.